Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing really well. I hope that you had a safe and happy Halloween, or if you're just about to start celebrating, I hope that you have an amazing, amazing time. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you the wrap up for the Graveyard Project Pan. This is definitely something that feels a little bit exciting to do, but also a little bit saddening. I'm definitely conflicted right now because this is the wrap up to a six month long project. I have had an absolute blast working on this project pan and this is the third year that I did this project. So that goes to show you how much fun I have with it, being able to do it so consistently and enjoying it every single time and finding some success in each round as well has been really, really fun for me. And it's been a really great project pan. The entire concept behind this project is to work on items that are more neglected, underutilized and things that you know, you just haven't reached for that often. And it has a spooky theme running throughout it. You can work on anything between five to 10 products in this project, but most people choose six because it's kind of more of like a spooky number as well. I've always exclusively worked on six products in this project, no matter what. And I found that to be a really great number of products to focus on for myself. There are two category prompts and I'll share with you what those categories are as we go into the products, but they have such fun themes behind them. I love this project so, so much. It was started by my friend, Emily. Her channel is Emily and Max. That's more for like panning and beauty related channel, but she also has another channel, McKinnis Mama, which is like a family lifestyle booktube kind of channel. I will have both of those linked down in the description box of today's video so that you can go check her out if you're not yet familiar with her. She's super sweet, very kind and approachable and real, and she's a fellow Canadian. And if you like my content, you'll absolutely love Emily's content as well. She does a lot of project panning, a lot of just like, being critical of her own consumption as well. And I just find her channel to be very inspiring. So definitely go check her out. And in the description box, I'll also have linked the um, community playlist for this project pan. So you can check out everyone who's participating in this project here on YouTube and the hashtag, which is graveyard project pan over on Instagram. And yeah, there will be tons of information about this project and all that fun stuff. So why don't we hop on into all the progress that I've made over this past two months since the last update of this project. I'm going to kick it off with the collecting cobwebs items. So these items are the ones that are collecting dust, collecting cobwebs in your collection, things that you're not reaching for, you're not gravitating towards, they haven't been getting use or love and you wanna kind of bring them back to the forefront. The first item that I have in this category is one that I just hadn't reached for in quite a while and I wanted to set myself a usage goal on it. So it was the Masquerade Mini by Juvia's Place. I have had this palette in this project pan since the introduction, which was six months ago. And my goal with this was to use it 25 times throughout this project. When I first rolled it into the project, I thought that could be something that I might be able to finish up within the first update, which is a two month span. And I still had it in after update one, I still had it in after update two. And today I unfortunately have not yet reached that goal, which is wild to me. So I had previously used it 15 times prior to today's update, which meant I only needed to use it 10 times in two months and I only used it eight times. Today I'm wearing it for these matte browns all over my lid. And that's the eighth time I've reached for it in the last two months. So I've used it a total of 23 times. I'm just shy of my goal. This palette does look really well loved though. And I have enjoyed reaching for it those 23 times, but I'm shocked that in six months, that's all that I've done with this palette. That's not to say I don't adore this palette anymore, but I have found that because I'm working on several project pans that have eyeshadows in them, this has definitely fallen by the wayside. And this is something that I've just forgotten to use. And the intention with putting this in this project was to give it attention and to use it and not let it get overlooked. And unfortunately I have allowed that to happen. 23 uses is still good and very substantial. And I'm happy I did reach for it that many times because this never got rolled into my pan, those eyeshadows over the last few years. So, at least it's been used 23 times this year, but I do feel like I, I just am kind of taken aback that that's all that I've managed to do with this palette and that it's taken me six months to do so, but that's okay. I have enjoyed reaching for it every time that I've used it. I've used it in a wide array of ways for sure throughout this project pan and I've had a lot of fun with it. So 
23 uses on this is not quite my goal, but it's pretty close and you know what? I'm okay with that. I'm definitely okay with that. Now the next item is one that I've also had in the project since the introduction of this project. I, again, thought it wasn't gonna take me the entire project to use up, so I've had it in here for the full six months. It is the Derma E Essentials Sun Protection Mineral Powder SPF 30. This is a SPF uh, powder that had like a slight peachy beige kind of tint to it, and it has this brush applicator and the product just kind of comes through the brush. However, you can, ugh. however, you can twist off the bottom and like use your own brush within this powder. And I am really happy to say that I finally finished it off because after my last update, I ended up just taking this entirely off and depotting the product into a larger container so I could kind of use it all over my face and use it a little bit more liberally than in this tiny little packaging right here or with this brush that started to, um, just like get kind of built up with product. It, it unfortunately hasn't been working as well as it originally did. And now in part, I would admit that I use this as a dry shampoo a lot throughout the last few months. So I probably was getting my greasy hairs on it and then it got kind of clogged up if I'm honest. So even though the packaging started to fail on me, it was easy enough to depot this product and put it into a different package. And I used it up probably within like three or four weeks since my last update. So I haven't been reaching for this for about a month because I don't have anything left in it. It feels really good to have finally finished this off, however, because there was technically an expiry date of July, 2021 on here. So I wasn't using it exclusively for its SPF value. So it was okay to continue using this after the expiry date, but it does feel good to just be cognizant of that and to ensure that I'm using things like kind of in a timely manner. And I'm happy it's finally gone because this didn't really do anything of value for me, if I'm honest. It was a setting powder that just kind of did the trick a little bit, but I didn't absolutely love it. I didn't find that it was the best setting powder, nor did I find it to be the worst. So it is what it is. It didn't really leave any sort of major impression on me, but it's also not a product I would recommend at all because I believe it only comes in this one color. And truly, I just feel like it was okay to have a little bit of like an amp up of my SPF, you know, on top of my skincare routine and on top of my makeup or as a touch up kind of option but I could take it or leave it. You know what I mean? I consider this to be a makeup product in my makeup inventory, not a skincare product because I used it more so as a makeup sort of option, as more of a powder than as an SPF. So feels good to get a powder used up and out of my collection is what I'm trying to say. And the last product in this category, so in the collecting cobwebs category, is one that I rolled in just in my last update. It is the Catrice Illuminating Prime and Fine Dewy Glow Fixing Spray. Quite a long name for this product, but I rolled it in in my last update and I was up to about this line right here. So I had, I don't know, just under a third of the product left in the packaging but I hadn't reached for it in so long. I just was not using it and I kind of forgot that I had it in my collection. So I brought it to the forefront, used it in this project and I got it completely used up in the last two months. So I was able to just completely polish that off. I used it sometimes as more of like a prep spray before I went in with foundation or tinted moisturizer. Other times I would use it to settle down powders on my skin because this actually does offer a really beautiful finish on the skin. It looks very glowy and healthy, but it does lock my makeup into place as well. It actually was a really good fixing kind of spray, like hairspray for your face, you know? And I really did enjoy using this so much so that I flew through it. I used it in like three or four weeks. Again, same thing with the powder. Like I haven't been using this at all in the month of October. It just was gone so fast. I used it to kind of foil eyeshadows as well. I was really good at multi-purposing this and reaching for this on a very frequent basis. So it was easy to fly through and it feels good, again, to have another empty from my collection. The remaining three products in this project are from the resurrection category. The resurrection category is the one that was really the idea behind this project pan when Emily first came up with it. And I think it's such a great, a great idea. The resurrection category is products that you had previously had in project pans, things that you focused on in the past, 
and you may have hit your goal, you may not have hit your goal, but you kind of just want to continue working on them. So you may have hit pan on them in the past and then you ended up wanting to try to finish them in this project or you weren't able to hit pan on them previously. So you want to bring it back out and try to hit that goal, make it happen in an update or, or two. This category I feel like is one that has just been so crucial for me because a lot of the time I work on products in a project pan and then I put them back in my collection after I've hit my goal and I just don't reach for them again until, you know, months or years go by. So it's it's been a really good project, um, especially because of this category for me personally. The first product that I'm working on in this category is one that has been a staple of this project pan. It has been so consistently in this project pan. I had it in the very first round that I did, which is in 2019. I had it as a collecting cobwebs product actually. And then I brought it into this project in 2020 because I hadn't hit that goal. So I brought it in as a resurrection product. And now it's a resurrection product with a new goal. So this is the Milani Baked Powder Blush in the shade Luminoso. If you have been keeping up with this project in any capacity, in any year, you know, this has been a freaking struggle for me. It is a product that I absolutely adore. I love the way that it looks and the way that it performs, but it's the oldest makeup product in my collection. And it was the oldest makeup product in my collection, even when I put it into the project in 2019. So it, it's had quite a life with me and it's, it's been quite a challenge. I can't believe that this, product has been sticking around. But my initial goal with it was to hit pan on it in 2019. I didn't do that. 2020, my goal was to hit pan on it. And I finally did end up doing that. And so my goal this year was a quite lofty goal, but it was the goal to finish it up. Unfortunately, I haven't yet done that, but she's freaking close. Look at that. So in the last six months, I have truly expanded the pan. Like I made considerable progress on this. I'm really happy with where it stands because every single update I was saying to myself, like, I don't think I'm going to finish it, but I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to keep trying. It's going to happen. Like I, I'm going to make sure I'm close to finishing it so that it, it just is nearly the end, you know? So I've been working diligently on this and there's barely any product left in here. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to polish it off for today's finale, but I'm hella close. And I know, I know if I dedicate just a couple more months to this product, I will have it used up in no time because there's barely anything here. It's truly, truly empty. It's just that tiny little bit right there. The rest of this is all pan. So it really won't take me that long at all. I may need to take a little bit of a break from it after I wrap up this project, but I'm going to see how I feel in a couple of weeks time. Maybe I can finish it by the end of 2021. Who knows? That would be really cool though, wouldn't it? Maybe I should just keep working on it after this project. But yeah, technically I've not hit my goal, but I feel so good about this. Like this looks so close. It looks so close and it feels so good. And yeah, I'm super, super happy with this. For this being a drugstore blush that I've had for legitimately years at this point, I've had this longer than I've been in my relationship with my boyfriend and we've been together for a long time. So I can't believe that this is still performing as well as it is. I'm wearing it today and I adore it still every single moment that I use this blush. I love it. And I've had it for yawns, but it's nearly time to go. It truly is almost time to go. The next two products in this category, I rolled in, in my last update. So the first one here is one that had been in one round of my roulette pan collab in the past. So I resurrected it. My goal with this was just to continue to expand the pan. It is the physician's formula butter blush in the shade natural glow. This I don't use as a blush, so it was okay to work on this in tandem with the Milani blush. So my goal was to expand the pan. I couldn't really set myself like any other sort of like attainable sort of goal with this because I truly didn't know how much I'd be able to reach for it in two months or how much like noticeable progress I could make. 
but I'm really happy. I do feel like I've managed to expand the pan, just bringing it back again to the forefront and ensuring it was getting reached for instead of being neglected in my collection. So that feels like a success to me, even though the goal was not really a measurable goal. I haven't yet looked at what the actual comparison looks like um, from the previous photo, but I will share that with you on the screen. And I'm sure that there is, you know, a little bit of a difference because I have been reaching for this very consistently. I have been reaching for this as like a blush kind of topper product because I'll swatch it for you here. It does look like it has a little bit of base pigment in it, but not much. It's like a peachy kind of rose gold color. But when I swatch it, you can see it just offers a sheen. This is something that I tend to use more as like a highlighter, an illuminator. Um, I use it as like a way of buffing out all of my cheek products and just offering a glow on the skin. I do think it's really beautiful for that. And I really, really enjoy this product, even though it's not really what I would imagine that it should be targeted as. Like it shouldn't be marketed as a blush in my opinion, but it's a beautiful product nevertheless. And I was so happy to be reaching for this over the past few months or two months in this project. And the final product here I have in front of me is one that again was rolled in in my last update. I had this previously in my 20 favorites in 2020 project pan. It is the airbrush flawless finish skin perfecting micro powder in the shade two, me two medium. This is by Charlotte Tilbury. I had this in a project pan where my intention was to hit pan on it. And I did do that in the past. So in this project pan, I wanted to continue to expand the pan. And again, it wasn't like a measurable kind of goal, but I have definitely, definitely done that. So I would consider this technically a goal hit because I made sure I was reaching for it very consistently. In fact, I was using this almost every single day that I did my makeup and sometimes multiple times a day as like a blotting powder, sometimes as a setting powder, under eyes, all over the face, whatever. I was using this on the regular for sure. And the pan is massive now. It's huge. And I'm so happy about that because this is a product that I spent a lot of money on. And I, you know, sometimes tend to want to keep things that I spent a lot of money on so that I can covet them and just have them. But that makes absolutely no sense because I bought it for the actual product itself. So I'm happy to see that I'm actually getting use out of this. And I imagine this is something I'll be able to finish up in a relatively short amount of time if I focus my energies and like continue to do so moving forward. I am wearing this today. I've been wearing this pretty much every single day and really enjoying it. I don't think that it's like the be all end all of powders. I don't think that it's anything super special, but seeing as I have it and I spent my hard earned money on it, I do want to ensure that I get great use out of it and it does the trick just fine. So that's all that really matters to me. So I'm really happy to have expanded the pan and to have prioritized this product over the past two months. And seeing as this is the finale, I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about the previous products I had in this project. So altogether, I have focused on nine items in this project pan. And as you saw today, I've finished off two products in today's update. I would say that I technically hit my goal on these two products, although those were not measurable goals. I did just continue to expand the pan. There are two products that I unfortunately did not reach my goals on, but I'm feeling pretty good about the amount of progress I made. Nevertheless, I'm a little, little disappointed in this one, but I'm definitely very happy with the blush here. And previous to today's update in my last update of the project, I rolled out three products as well. So there were two additional empties that I actually ended up finishing off. So through this project pan, I finished four products from my collection and that is so good. I'm so happy about it because these were products that were lingering in my collection for quite some time. And it feels so nice to know I got four empties for the end of this year. So I finished off the Becca Sunlit Bronzer in the shade Bronze Fondi in my last update. It's just a mini, but it had been in two previous project pans to this one. So it was a product that just did not want to ever, ever leave my collection. And then this one had also been in two previous project pans. This is the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Highlighting Powder in the shade Precious Petals. And I finished this off in my last update as well, which this was a massive, massive success for me and a huge accomplishment for me personally, because highlighters are like near impossible to finish up, I swear, especially when you're someone like me who has like 
over 20 highlighters. Oh, and I did actually also hit um, my goal on this item. I did not finish this. My goal was not to finish it, but I made really great progress on the Becca Glow Gloss in the shade Opal as well. So it was kind of like how the powders are. It was just make progress on it. But I hit that goal. And so this project has been a pretty big success for me. If you participated in this project, please leave down in the description box um, where I can find your finale and let me know some of your successes to this project pan if you feel like kind of sharing and spoiling it a little bit. I'd love to chat a little bit more about this project pan down in the description box. No not down in the description box, down in the comment section below. But that is everything for today's video. Thank you so, so much for watching and for hanging out with me. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye, everyone.